so if you observe a food chain you will find producer producers and producers to primary consumer and secondary consumer and tertiary consumer so we have studied that in your lower classes that is in your eighth class you have studied about the food chains and the relations there we have studied about the energy flow how the energy flows from one level to the another level say for example so do you think that the 100 percent of the energy that is produced by the producer from the sunlight from the light here these plants produced some food so if this food is eaten by the primary consumer do you think that 100 percent of the energy is transferred to the primary consumer of course most of the energy is transferred to the primary consumer but here the consumers are the animals which carry out a process called as respiration and during the process of respiration nearly 80 percent of the energy is dissipated in the form of heat so whatever the energy is transferred from the producer to the primary consumer it is not restored here most 80 percent of it is released into the atmosphere dissipated in the form of heat so the energy available for the next level that is to the secondary consumer is very low compared to the first level so as we are proceeding going up to the level by level the amount of energy available for the next category the next level is very less so we observe that in every food chain after three steps for the final top carnivore or to the final level organism very little amount of energy is very less percentage of energy is available for the last level so this is what observed in a food chain so now we are talking about the biosphere biosphere is a very large environmental part the biosphere it includes everything every living organism living on this whole planet you consider this the earth so on the earth wherever you find an organism you consider this total environment part as biosphere but again this biosphere is divided into many parts a biosphere consists of so many ecosystems you can take sahara desert it is an ecosystem you can take some other uh, lake kolleru that is an ecosystem so likewise there are so many ecosystems an ecosystem may be a very small you can take an oak tree a oak tree itself an ecosystem so now let us talk about uh, those different parts of the biosphere so we have been discussing about biosphere so the biosphere it is the place in which all the living organisms live all the plants animals microorganisms everything on this planet every living thing on this planet is it comes into this biosphere so the biosphere it is made into so many different parts the biosphere cannot be studied we cannot study the biosphere as the surrounding or environment of an organism so for an easier study the biosphere is made is divided into various ecosystems ecosystems there are so much of great variation in the climatic conditions from place to place you see the sahara desert or you see the himalaya mountains you find a large variation in the temperature rainfall and uh, other uh, climatic factors so based upon these climatic factors we observe so many different types of ecosystems in the biosphere so if we observe the globe here we find a great variation if you look at the poles and look at that equator at equator so there is a large variation of climatic factors when compared to this equator to the poles so at the same time you see if you look at the kilimanjaro of equatorial africa or himalayas in india 
so you will find that it starts with a tropical forest tropical forest at the base and it goes to the top of the hill so quickly you will get at various different types of ecosystems here you can observe so here what are the climatic factors that influence if we look at the first one the sun or the light availability humidity rainfall so these are the various factors that influence these are the various climatic factors that influence an ecosystem if you see the desert it's greatly influenced by that extreme low rainfall and extreme heat high temperatures so these links the climate the temperature the rainfall of uh, different ecosystems will not give the exact linking so even if you see the food chain you will see different animals so so we have uh, uh, seen that food chains so by looking at the food chain also we cannot easily estimate the food links and we cannot completely understand the food relations but they help because food chains are not uh, food chains may be short but i told you that before we discussed it that one organism can be a part of one or many food chains say for example if you take aphids so these aphids may be eaten by number of insectivorous birds at the same time they are eaten by rabblers at the same time they are eaten by ladybirds these are also kind of insects so other insectivorous in there the other insects also may eat the aphids and birds may eat the aphids so the aphids are the prey for number of organisms in the same way you take the hawks these hawks are prey for many small animals many rat many rodents snakes and uh, it's uh, it eats so many small animals so it can be a part of number of food chains so what do we understand by this just simply by establishing certain food chains and by studying only the food chains we cannot easily find out the whole uh, relation or interdependence of various things in an ecosystem so better we use food webs i already told you that food webs are formed by so many food chains so the flow of energy from the sun to different organisms and again back to the environment in another form that is all takes place in a very complex manner so the food relations are better understood in a food web food web rather than a food chain food web so here we know about the term habitat related to this environment we have studied it denotes the place where an animal lives so the living place of an animal is called as its habitat so here we are going to discuss about one more term niche what does this denotes if you observe the living things different organisms in a deciduous woodland there you will observe different kind of insects plants and and on trees if you take the aphids so these aphids they live on the plant what is the habitat of that aphid you can say plant or if they are living on the leaf you can say that habitat leaf you can take that caterpillar this is also lives on the leaf in terms of habitat both are having same habitat leaf but do both get same kind of food in the same way from the plant aphids you know that they suck the plant juices they have some kind of needle like mouth parts through which the juices are up, sucked up from the leaf so that is the mode of nutrition sucking plant juices sucking juices from leaves whereas the caterpillar with its strong cutting mouth parts it cut the leaves it cut the leaves you see sucking juices and cut the leaves 
but both are feeding on the leaves you see the other herbivorous animals like goat sheep deer they come and eat the leaves they are also feeding on the leaf but the mode of feeding is different so the nietzsche tells about not only the place its type of food and the mode of consumption of food so it defines that the type and mode of the food of an organism the nietzsche tells that 